In this video, we're going to take a look at graphs of functions and their derivatives. I want to be able to go in both directions. I want to start with a graph of a function, and I want to be able to, from that, draw the graph of its derivative. And I want to be able to start with a graph of a derivative and then draw the original function. So in this case, I've started by giving us a, the picture of f of x. This would be the original function. So what I want to do from here is graph the derivative f prime of x. I'm going to do this on the exact same grid here, uh, just in a different color blue so that we can see the difference. So remember, a derivative is purely the slope. So if I look at the slope of this first line here, it's going up two to the right by one. Each of these is a little tick mark of one. So that's up two to the right by one. So that means we have a positive slope from negative infinity to zero. Uh, so we are going to draw y values of two from negative infinity to zero. Now, whether this is supposed to be a closed filled in circle or an open circle, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So we'll come back and think about the circles in just a second. Then from zero to infinity, we can see that this graph just stays flat. That means it is a constant or it has a slope of zero. And so my y values I'm going to draw are zero to represent the fact that it has a slope of zero. So this blue graph, what we are actually drawing is the slopes of the original black graph. We had a slope of two. We draw y values of two, covering spanning all those x values. From zero to infinity, we had a slope of zero. We draw y values of zero, spanning from zero to infinity. Now I said we need to think about these two points. Should they be open? Should they be closed? Well, think about what's going on at zero. That is a non-differentiable point because it's not continuous. The function exists, but the limit doesn't exist from left and right, so it's not continuous. Therefore, it's a non-differentiable point. So we can't indicate that the derivative is there. I can't, for instance, fill this in. That would be wrong because then we're indicating that the function's derivative exists at zero, which it does not. So we need to leave both of those as open circles. Let's take a look at another graph. So here we have our second example. It looks to be kind of like an absolute value function. This is meant to be straight line paths there, not supposed to be curves. And we can see on the right hand side it ends over here at two, on the left hand side it continues going to negative infinity. So I want to come in here, I want to find the derivative the same way we did before. Well, once again, this is very easy because we have just straight lines, so we can calculate their slopes. We're going up one and to the right by two. Notice each tick mark is accounting for one. So up by one, right by two. That's our slope over here to the right of negative two. To the left of negative two, it's supposed to be the same exact slope, continues indefinitely, but it's not quite the same slope, is it? Because uh, we're going down by one and to the right by two. So the lines should be the same values, it's just the directions are two different directions. So to the left of negative two, we're going to have a slope value of one half. It's a constant slope, so it needs to be a straight line, and its value is one half. To the right of two, we have that slope value of positive one half, and so it's going to be y values of positive one half. Now I put an error on that accidentally, I shouldn't, because this right hand side needs to stop at two. Once we reach the end of the domain, the function fails to exist, so it's only going to go from negative two up to two, and it's going to stop there. Left-hand side continues indefinitely. Now, I just made that last endpoint filled in, so let's talk about when it should be open, when it should be closed. Uh, endpoints. If we're at the end of the domain, uh, then those are going to be uh, included points. We can take the derivative at an endpoint. Uh, we're going to assume that to be the case. Uh, here in the middle here, when we have that transition, once again, this is a non-differentiable point. Like we saw with above, this time it's for a different reason. Above, we said it was non-differentiable because it was con uh, discontinuous. It was not continuous at that point. But here, this is continuous. It passes straight through, but it's a corner. The graph makes a very sudden transition from negative, two, uh, negative one half to a positive one half. And so that means we have uh, a, uh, uh, a point that is not differentiable, and therefore we have to indicate both ends with open circles. So the last two we've done have been fairly easy because we were dealing with straight line paths and it's very easy to look at a straight line path and to calculate its slope. If we look at a curve, that is much more challenging as we have two curves here. For instance, if I look at this point right here and say, what is this slope? Well, at that instant in time, you know, it looks to be maybe like it's going up, if we're to kind of extrapolate on that, maybe up to over one, but that's hard to kind of get an exact. Um, let me try and really make this curve look a little bit more like I intended. Uh, try to hit my marks. And so then um, 
after this point right here, we can see again, it's starting out very, very slight in its slope. You know, that's near zero right there, but then right here, well, now it's picking up a little bit. It's getting steeper, it's getting steeper. Uh, on this right-hand side, kind of the same thing, it's getting steeper and steeper. And so it's hard to look at, you know, that point right there and say, all right, that slope is exactly negative three or positive four, or whatever it would be. It's really hard to tell on a curve. Uh, but what we can focus on is when the curve changes directions, because that's very, very useful. Anytime the curve is transitioning from positive to negative or from negative to a positive slope, that means that the slope at that transition point has to be zero. Uh, we can see that the tangent line right there has a tangent slope of zero. So even though it's really hard for me to look at this point on the curve and know exactly what its slope is, I can look at this point right here and know it is exactly zero. The derivative of the function at negative one, at negative two, excuse me, is zero. From there, we're going to think about if we have positive or negative slopes. On that left-hand side, the slope was going up. As we go from left to right, now look, letting our eye follow the arrow, we're looking from left to right, we can see that slope is positive. It's going uphill. After, it's downhill. It's negative. So uh, we're going to indicate that we have positive slopes to the left of negative 2, and then from 2, we have negative slopes until we get to uh, our point down here at... Uh, one. I should not put a closed or open circle there. I'll leave it open. I'll indicate what it is in just a second. Now, do I know exactly at, uh, say, negative three over here that the slope is exactly two? No, I'm kind of ballparking it, right? That's kind of what we estimate it to be. But what I can see is that slope is getting steeper and steeper as the line progresses. As we continue back up here to the right, or as the curve progresses, I should say, as we continue back into the right, as we get closer and closer to negative two, we get closer and closer to zero. And so that's what our line here is indicating. Our derivative is saying we're starting out at these really, really large slope values. It's getting steeper and steeper as we progress up here. And as we come back to the right, we're getting closer and closer to zero up until we actually reach zero at negative two. And then from negative two, again, we're starting really, really close to, to zero, slope very close to zero. It's getting steeper and steeper as we get closer and closer to this point, hitting a slope of approximately uh, negative two. But that's approximate. I don't know for certain it's hard to calculate exact slopes. So now we have that first uh, function done. Next, we're going to look at this second little segment of, of the function. And we can see that slope is 0. The zeros are always the easy ones to tell. So between negative 1 and 1, slope is 0. It's just staying flat, staying right on the y-axis because that indicates a y value of 0. And then from uh, 1 on, from 1 to infinity, that slope starts very, very close to 0. It looks like it would nearly be 0. And then it's very, very slight here up until, um, you know, two. It appears that two, we're still at like a slope value, maybe one tenth, something very, very small. And then that slope value gets steeper and steeper as we move to the right. So it starts off close to zero, gets steeper and steeper as it moves off to the right. And it is a positive slope, which is why we're above the y-axis. The blue curve, the blue figure is showing positive slopes versus negative slopes. Anytime we're above the x-axis, that is a positive slope. If we're below the x-axis, that's a negative slope. If we're sitting on the x-axis, that is a slope of zero. Now I need to discuss these endpoints. So we've figured out the curves and the lines, but what happens at the ends? Well, right here at negative one, the function was not continuous. That means both ends must be open. Same story is true at one. Both of these ends must be open because that is not a continuous curve. Uh, and so we need to keep these end markers open, not because a function does or does not exist. We don't care about what the function is doing. The blue curve has no relation to the function other than its slope. And because the function's uh, derivative was not defined at negative 1 and 1, we have to leave those blue circles open. I'm going to call this function g of x just to give us a little variety. So we have a, a different looking function here. This end makes it look like it would nearly be a cubic function, but then this one's leveling off and that is intentional. Uh, the little kind of bumps along are not intentional. It's meant to just be a smooth curve. But uh, again, it's real hard to look at that and know exactly at this precise point right here what the slope is. We're gonna have to do a little bit of estimating. There are two points I know of g prime of x right away. Right here at negative two, I know the slope is zero. And then right here at zero, I also know the slope is zero because the function is turn, turning around right there. 
So now that we have those zeros on there, those are the two points that we know for certain. What we see is to the left of negative two, we see this positive slope that's starting out very, very steep and getting closer and closer to zero. It's leveling off. That slope is getting closer and closer to zero. So positive slope means I'm above the x-axis. I approach that point at zero. At negative two, slope becomes zero for an instant in time, and then it becomes a negative slope. And that negative slope remains true all the way till we get up to zero. Now, if we look at the slope between these two zeros, where the slope is zero, it starts out very, very slight, gets steeper, 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 then slows back down. And then uh, it gets closer and closer to zero. So it gets steeper and steeper, and then it slows back down as we get closer to the other zero. So it's going to become more and more negative, and then at some point in there, it's going to turn around until finally we reapproach our zero. We have a negative slope the entire time. Uh, the y values here are negative. And then from uh, the zero, we can see that we have a positive slope again. That positive slope gets steeper and steeper until it starts to level back off. So it gets steeper and steeper, and then it starts to slow back down. Um, and I'm not going to say it's approaching zero, but it's just approaching whatever that slope value in there. So it might even be a little bit closer. Notice I haven't actually given you any y values here because um, we can't really tell what that slope is anyways, right? Even if we're given a y value, it's real hard to look at a curve and tell exactly what its slope value is. Next, this is the first one that we haven't had the blue graph being jumpy. In the last case, we saw that we had holes. The first case, same story, we had these jumps here. Uh, if you start with a function that is differentiable, the black function was differentiable at all of its points. When you take that derivative, it will always give you a smooth derivative. There will not be any discontinuities as long as every point on the original function is differentiable. If you have corners, cusps, discontinuities on the original function, when you draw that derivative, it is also going to be a little bit jumpy. It's going to have non-defined points in it. Uh, so that's how we take a function and we graph its derivative. The first thing I'm looking to see are, do I have straight lines? Those are super easy to find their derivative. Second thing, are there points on my function where the derivative is equal to zero? And then from there, are the slopes positive or negative? And when I'm drawing out this blue figure, again, I'm not saying that this slope is positive or negative. I don't care what the blue line is doing in terms of its slope. What I'm looking to see is, are those y values positive or negative? The blue curve, the y values are giving me the slope of the original function. Let's take an example where we go the other way around. segment. So we have three line segments here. This is representing f prime of x. Uh, we can see that these y values are going to give us the slope of the original function. So when I go to graph my original f of x, uh, these are the slopes because all three of them are a constant um, function. Each of them is just a horizontal line. It gives me a constant. That tells me the graph of the original function had three segments with constant slopes. The slope up to negative 2 was exactly negative 1. So I'm going to put my first point right here, let's say. And what this tells me to do is as I move to the left, I need to go up 1 to the left by 1. That would give me a slope of 1. Forgive me for getting into my functions a little bit. But there we have our slope of negative 1. It's going down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. But notice I do stop it at the negative 2. Because at negative 2, something different happens, and our slope becomes 0. So I'm going to show another graph, or I'm going to graph another portion of my function where that slope is just 0. That is a horizontal line. And then I'm going to graph my third segment here, which has a slope of 1. So if I start at this point right here, I would go up 1 and over 1. For instance, that would be... A good segment or a good representation of my graph. Now there's a couple things you're probably asking. Why did I choose to start in all of those different places? How did I know to make the ends open or closed? And here's the thing, I didn't. Because all the derivative gives me is the slope of the original function. It does not give me the y values. So if I had wanted to, could I have started right here on the x-axis, gone up one over one to the left? Could I have actually attached that to the constant function? And then attach the third segment where it's going up one and over one as well? Absolutely. That would be another correct version of the graph. Could I have started one segment down here, had a slope of, of uh, negative one, started the next segment up here, 
Sure. I could have included that endpoint. I could have left that one open. And then I could have started the next one down here again. Now, I'm going to get rid of these in just a second because I made this really messy. But here's the point. Like, those things can move in any direction that I want. There's not a set order to them. I don't have to have one higher than the other, lower than the other. There's no additional information. Now, if it told me the original function is going to start at the point 0, 0, well, then it's going to be uh, this middle one would have to be on the y-axis. If it told me it is continuous, it would have to be this red one. If it told me it is not continuous, it could not be the red one. So any of those versions would work, the green, the red, or the black. Let me clean them up in just a second here. Uh, now, again, why did I choose to make the endpoints as I did? Well, it doesn't matter. I could have made uh, these endpoints open here and here and filled these ones in. And that would have been absolutely fine as well. Uh, the key is it has to be a function. So I could not have them both defined. I couldn't fill both of these things in because now we don't pass our vertical line test. But we don't know where it sits in the plane. We only know the slope values. Let's take uh, one more example. And so I'm going to start with the graph of the derivative. In the derivative notice, all of these do have to be open because, um, because they are non-differentiable points. The slopes are different from left and right. So we, the derivative here, at any non-differentiable point, the derivative will always have to be an open dot. My function, I can choose to close one end in. I can choose to make it continuous. I have a lot of options there. So if I look to the left of negative 2, what I see is true about my slope is it's negative. You're looking at that and saying, no, it's positive slope. But remember, this blue graph is not showing me, I don't care what its slope is, I care about what its y values are. Its y values are showing me the slope. So the slope is negative here, it's below the y-axis. We can see that slope is getting steeper and steeper as it progresses to the left. As we get closer and closer to the negative 2, the slope is getting closer and closer to 1. So uh, we're going to have a very large negative slope coming closer and closer, but not quite getting to 0. So something like that might work. Let me just move it so I don't have these two dots overlapping um, to make it a little bit cleaner. So something like this. Getting closer and closer to 1. Notice it's not leveling off. It is meant to have a little bit of a slope there. And that end to the left is getting steeper and steeper. Between negative uh, 2 and 0, we can see the slope is exactly 1, positive. If I wanted to connect these up, I could absolutely do that. So I'd go up 1 and over 1. So, uh, like that, I would need to end it on my y-axis. can only really exist between negative 2 and 0. And then from 0 onwards, that is a positive slope, and that slope is getting steeper and steeper. I could start it here. I'm going to start it down a little bit lower just so I don't run into my old graph. But we can see that the slope starts out very, very close to 0, but then from there it gets steeper and steeper. And so that would be a good indication of my last component. So the black graph would move my f of x. We really need to, in our mind, separate the function values and the derivative values. The derivative values give us the slopes. These are just slopes for this original function. I only care about if those things are above the x-axis or below the x-axis, representing positive or negatives. And then, of course, when it touches the x-axis, that's where the slope is actually 0. Uh, but I don't care what the slope of this blue line is. The slope of the blue line ties in in no way to the, the, the black line. Um, the other thing I want to be really careful of is just because the derivative is below the x-axis doesn't mean that the function is below the x-axis. And just because the function is above the x-axis doesn't mean the function, the, invert, the derivative of the, the function has to be below the x-axis. So uh, practice these. These do take a little bit of practice. Just draw some functions down and see if you can find their derivatives. Just draw a picture and see if you can find its derivative or treat it as a derivative and find the original function.